Hi everybody, welcome to Grace with Paul Gray. Starting out with a little music for you today. I want to see if you recognize this song. It's not the song that's important though. Is this familiar to anybody? Let me turn it off and we'll talk about it. Well, the song's an old 1940s tune called Elmer's Tune. But it's not the song I want to talk about today. It's the sound. That particular sound, for those of us who, I didn't live during that time, I was born in 47, but for those of us who love that type of music and listen to different bands from the big band era, automatically that sound, we know that that's the Glenn Miller Orchestra. There was a great movie starring Jimmy uh, Stewart about the Glenn Miller story. Now, I don't know how factual it is. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, shows like that, and especially in that uh, time, were not very factual. But, it, but we do know, those of us who studied this type of thing, we do know that Glenn Miller worked real hard. He had something in his mind that he just couldn't quite grasp. And then one day it came to him, and that was, in his words, the sound. Now, I could tell you exactly musically what makes that sound, but that's not important. He came up with that sound, and the moment that his band, uh, which was very nondescript and not very successful, the moment he started using arrangements with that sound, it just took off and exploded and became one of the most famous uh, bands ever in the history of, of bands, really. So I want to just finish up today. I thought last week I was done with my little series on creativity, but I want to finish up today with some more thoughts I've had on creativity, starting out just by thinking about how God gave Glenn Miller that sound. I have no idea whether Glenn Miller was uh, a believer or a Christian or whatever, uh, but I do know that creativity and thoughts and things like that come from God. I'm going to give you some scripture to back that up, and then I'll just talk for a couple of more minutes. Uh, Romans 4, 17. God gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. And Dr. Kay Fairchild says that uh, her understanding of a, of a better translation for that would be that God makes something out of the unseen. He takes something that's unseen and then puts it in the seen realm where we can see it. Then Hebrews 11, uh, verses uh, 1 and 3, the writer says this, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And then Jeremiah 33, 3, the New King James says, this is God speaking, Call to me and I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. The message version says, this is God's message. The God who made the earth, made it livable and lasting, known everywhere as God, says this, call to me and I will answer you. I'll tell you marvelous and wonder, wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. God, the great creator, is still creating and he creates now in partnership with us. At our group here this morning, we talked about this creativity thing, and one of my friends who's part of our group runs a manufacturing plant, and he told us today how he will have dreams at night. He'll have a dream, he'll wake up, and in that dream, God has shown him how to build from scratch a machine that can manufacture something or help with something that's needed for his business. So he'll wake up, he's got the idea about this machine, and he'll start actually building the machine. Sometimes he'll get some other people involved in, in helping with that. He'll build the machine and then use it, and it actually does exactly what God showed him it would do. Then he goes back and figures out how it actually works. He doesn't yet know at that point exactly how it works. And he figures out mechanically how it works, and then he figures out what needs to be done to keep it running optimally and, and then to repair it and fix it and things like that. <laughs> it, it's an amazing thing. And he says those things just come totally from God. God creates today. He creates through us. He partners with us. 
Uh, we at our group together this morning, people gave examples of writing and not necessarily so-called Christian articles, uh, examples of gardening, carpentry, electricity stuff, electrical stuff, hospitality, cooking, decorating, entertaining, music, several different things. So I hope that this is encouraging to you that God still wants to create through you, as you, partnering with you. It doesn't make any difference. At our group here, we, we had people that are close to 90 years old. Uh, we had young families with little kids and you know people in between. It doesn't make any difference how old you are. It doesn't make any difference your position in life or how much money you have or how much education or, or training or anything like that. God has given us all creative abilities in some area of our life. And he gives us the delights of our hearts and he loves to create as us. It gives him great joy and it brings us great joy too. And that's the reason that I've been talking about this because this is something that has to do with the abundant life that Jesus came for us to have. And it really, it's thrilling, it's fun, it's delightful, it brings us joy to be able to create with God. And I'm going to be telling you soon uh, some uh, something that God is calling me to do along this realm that uh, is not it's nothing earth shattering, but I, it's fun for me, and I think it's going to be fun for you too. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.